Why aren't we more curious? Why don't we all want to better understand the world around us? <coughs> Science has always fascinated me. I am inquisitive. I want to know the answers to my why questions. This brings me to a quote. It must be a strange world not being a scientist, to not know or maybe not even care where the air comes from, where the stars come from, or maybe how far away they are from us. I want to know. But even though this quote is one of my biggest inspirations, I realised you don't have to have a title to be a scientist. You just have to be a little inquisitive and maybe prone to accidentally mounting things or setting them on fire once in a while. From a very young age, I have been taught to look. No, really look. My dad is a mycologist, a scientist who works with fungi. And as a family, we have traipsed through many forests, lifting dead logs, rustling under decaying matter, and ooing and ahhing at the beauty of amazing fungi. <laughs> Dad has a real passion for these unsung heroes of the forest, and this passion has always motivated and encouraged me too to become inquisitive into what we can't so easily see at a glance. This is how I found my love for microorganisms. In 2012, my real science journey began when I was in Year 7, where I entered the Neil Walken Science Fair for the first time with my project, Slime Mould, My New Pet. In this project, I was trying to work out the habits and behaviours of slime mould. Slime mould is actually a group of forest fungi that, that actually comes together in an amazing way to form a slimy plasmodium. It moves in search of food by coordination of all these separate cells. It can be kept at home, and hence is a bit like a pet. It is not well studied internationally, and the judges were mystified that I, as an 11-year-old girl, had decided on and completed this project. The answer to this was questioning. I was intrigued with something, and I wanted to know the answer. My curiosity for this project earned me first place in the Award for Excellence in Biological Science. This year, as a year eight, I entered the science fair again with my project, Yeasts, Feast on Sugar and, Sugar and Sound, and came out with three awards, including the premier gold award for the best project in the fair, judged over all entries year seven to 13. In essence, this yeast project was really quite simple. Here was a simple product that you buy in the supermarket and you use it in your everyday meals, but do we really know what lies in waiting in this tiny little jar? Yeast is a fermenting agent used in making bread, beer, and wine. It's included in the recipe just as another ingredient, but it's really a living celled organism. We buy it in its resting stage form, and it immediately wakes up and starts to grow, simply when given food, moisture, and warmth. From the very first moment of my project, I knew that I wanted to better understand yeasts that are so commonly used in homes and industries around the world. I first started wondering whether different sugars would affect the growth of yeast, maybe resulting in an effect in the baking of bread. When yeast grows, it releases CO2, or carbon dioxide. I had to find a simple way to measure the growth of yeast. I realised from researching on the internet that when you fill a glass with water, then put that water in and above surrounding water, the liquid inside the glass will stay there due to the pressure of the water beneath. But if any air is released inside that glass, the water will come out. Every time a burst of CO2 is released from the mixture of yeast and sugar, the water level will drop in the measuring cylinder. So I chose four different kinds of sugars. Palm sugar, raw sugar, brown sugar and glucose to test with the yeast. The yeast would feed in the sugars and then would produce CO2. I had to find out what time it took for enough CO2 to be released to empty a 100ml measuring cylinder. So after testing my experiment, I came up with my conclusion. Palm sugar greatly increases the growth of yeast in a massive way. But after this, I needed something more, something that could take this project to the next level. I wanted to find the perfect combination of yeast and sugar. I'd already found the yeast, Saccharomyces cerevisiae, and the sugar, palm sugar. So one day I was sitting in front of TV watching Seven Sharp when they started talking about this crazy man who was blasting music through his vineyards and hen houses. Even though he had found a difference in his grapes, I figured could sound or music affect the growth of yeast? 
I could take a risk. You never know if you never try. This world is such an intriguing place. All it takes is one wondering, a questioning, a spark in somebody's mind that could change the world as we know it. So, how could music or sound affect the growth of yeast? I read some research done by a, doc by a scientist at the University of Auckland called Dr. Villas Bowers, who had found that yeast can produce different chemicals when there was sound or music involved. I chose my tones and all pitches, 100, 400, 1000 and 10,000 hertz, downloading and repeating those tones through my iPod into a speaker. So I used the same yeast, Saccharomyces cerevisiae and palm sugar because I already knew it was the most efficient. So I had now done my test. I found my conclusion. 400 hertz greatly decreases the time it takes for a 100 mil cylinder to empty by over half. I'd now found my perfect combination. Saccharomyces cerevisiae, palm sugar, and the all-important 400 hertz. The awesome thing about science is the power of not knowing. I still had no idea, and I still don't, of why this made a difference to the yeast. Well, since this project and organism is not well studied internationally, I couldn't exactly look it up on Google. So on the day of the science fair, I received a little note in my logbook from a research, researcher at the Auckland University who wants to work with me to hopefully find, figure out this stimulating mystery. This was very exciting, and it shows what you can come to with science. I would never have dreamed of being able to do this a year ago, but because I never stopped thinking and posing questions, I reached my goal. It was from here that I realised that this could be a major break in bulk production. One combination could change the speed of baking and production of wine to majorly help industries and companies worldwide. I still don't know what it would taste like, but it couldn't be that bad, could it? So it started from a small spark of wonder in my mind to a full science exhibit. I have learned so much and talked to so many amazing people, scientists, children, and normal members of society alike. I still have not found the answer, but every step I get a little bit closer. Science is about not giving up, going that extra step, and taking risks. Anyone can do science if they put their mind to it, have some curiosity for their surroundings, and have that passion in their heart. Get into science, change the lives of others. I will leave you with a quote. An overwhelming responsibility is set before me to heal the earth. Change begins with me, so step by step, I will change my habits to lessen the burden I place on the earth. Be the change. Thank you.